Hey there, my name is Bill Marion and this is A Nose for Life. Sometimes when making a video for YouTube, it's hard to find the story. Most YouTubers think of a topic, do some research, and shoot a video. Well, that's not how we roll. We just get in the truck and look for the story. Don't get me wrong, we'll have an idea about the destination, and yes, occasionally the destination becomes the story. But this is one of those times where there wasn't much of a story once we reached our destination. A few years ago, we found ourselves on Rich Mountain in Randolph County, West Virginia. There's a Civil War battlefield there and Cumbre Bow State Forest. Actually, there are a lot of things we love in this part of West Virginia. We're in this region a lot. Anyway, we came back on this trip to visit Cumbria Bow State Forest. Located 3,000 feet above sea level, Cumbria Bow State Forest is West Virginia's highest state forest. The name Cumbria Bow comes from the surnames of the park's earliest supporters, Governor Herman G. Kump, Spates Brady, and Hubert Bowers. I would have picked a different name, but that's just me. It's known for hiking trails and fishing streams, but we didn't find a story, at least not here. But trust me, you want to stick around to the end of this video because we we did find an amazing story in a high valley deep in the Allegheny Mountains of West Virginia. So go ahead and hit that like button and let's get started. Clean energy. Two out of five isn't bad. <laughs> Okay, listen, over the past three years, we've made more videos in West Virginia than any other state. We love West Virginia. However, I'm sure that you understand that not every place we visit is as interesting to us as a different place we visit. I'm sure Cumbria Bow State Forest is someone else's jam. I'm sure that all year there are people counting down the seconds until they get to visit West Virginia's highest state forest. And that's great. It's fine. But it's odd that despite the fact it's located on West Virginia's Rich Mountain, there isn't a single decent vehicle accessible overlook at Cumbria Bow State Forest. Forest. The views would be breathtaking here, rivaling other scenic West Virginia locations. The potential here is amazing. I'm sure there's an official reason, but spoiler alert, whatever the reason, it's probably made up because vehicle accessible overlooks generate funds for places like this. Not to mention that it gives people with disabilities more options to enjoy nature. But it's fine. For whatever reason, Cumberbound State Forest isn't about scenic views. So what? No big deal. But it meant we didn't have a story for this video. But this is when Carolyn and I are at our best. Finding the story to talk about is half the fun, so we found ourselves driving up and down different parts of Rich Mountain looking for that story. It's early spring here in the Alleghenies, and at this point, we're about two and a half hours from where we live in Virginia. Now, this is really interesting, but there's about a three to five week difference in the seasons between where we live in Virginia and this part of West Virginia. Temperatures were in the mid-60s while we were shooting this video. But today, while scripting and recording this video, May 1st to be exact, a winter storm warning was just issued issued for this entire area of West Virginia. So this region gets a lot of snow in the fall, in the winter, and in the spring, and it's possible to see flurries here all year long. We left Cumbria Bow State Forest on this back road looking for scenic views. Okay, take a look at this region. Like most of the areas we visit in West Virginia, this is a remote area. Now notice all of these back roads. I love mountain roads like this, but this area is mostly private land tracks and old coal mine property, so I understand why there aren't any scenic views back here. In the summer, this is the kind of area where you're likely to see Bear, Bigfoot, and aliens. After spending hours on these back roads, we figured it was time to navigate back towards Elkins, West Virginia, so we could make the two-hour trip back home. We were hungry and a little disappointed. Truthfully, we were more hungry than disappointed. Okay, actually, I don't think we were disappointed at all. I think we were just hungry. Now, it wasn't long after hitting Blacktop that I noticed a Swiss flag in the distance. Now, you have to admit, it's kind of odd to see a Swiss flag in the middle of nowhere. That doesn't happen every day. We noticed that we were coming into what I thought was one of those German, or in this case, Switzerland-themed towns you see all over the Appalachian Mountains. And they're kind of cheesy. Only that this wasn't a cheesy-themed town. This was a real, honest-to-goodness, traditional Swiss village. Helvetia, West Virginia. This is an actual town in West Virginia that was established by Swiss immigrants just after the Civil War. And it turns out this place is kind of famous. Here you'll find hand-painted signs of coats of arms, Swiss phrases, historical markers, public buildings and homes adorned in alpine gingerbread and bright floral patterns. It's located in a high mountain valley along the Buchanan River. Helvetia's population is somewhere around 40 people. You're not going to find things like mountain taffy or mountain fudge here. This isn't a typical tourist trap. But speaking of food, we landed at the Helvetian Hutte. I really hope I'm saying that right. Regardless, it was one of the best dinners we've had in a long time 
time. This place is amazing. Helvetia is remote and isolated. One writer describes it as being at least an hour from anywhere. But let me add, that really depends on what you count as anywhere. Because this tiny town is very remote and isolated. And still, this 2023 sign-in book is signed from people who come here to eat from all over the world. This isn't your normal tourist trap, people. And the food is out of this world. Every time we think we have West Virginia figured out, we learn something new. After finishing an amazing meal, it was time for the long drive back to Virginia. Because we arrived so late in the day, I didn't capture nearly enough video. But when planning your West Virginia vacation, you need to add this to your list. They have festivals throughout the year. And did I mention that the food is out of this world? I think so. Yeah, okay, okay. Thank you for watching this video and here are some other videos you'll enjoy. Make sure you click the like and subscribe button and leave a comment. My name is Bill Marion and this is A Nose for Life.